In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I have to confess to you all that when I hear St. Paul talking about having the same mind in us that was in Christ in his letter to the Philippians in chapter 2, I cannot help but think of the movie Young Frankenstein by Mel Brooks. And that whole series of scenes where Igor is sent to go procure a brain and he gets the brain of the person named Abby Normal. I can't help it. Maybe it has something to do with the way I feel about Paul, which is very mixed. Um, but it's always seemed to be a strange phrase in English. And of course, Paul didn't write it in English, so that kind of makes sense. But this idea of having the same mind, of having the same idea, believing together with another person is kind of a challenge for me. I mean, there's lots of people who believe things together regardless of the facts. There's lots of people who believe the Earth is flat still, even today with photos from space. The fact that you can go to northeast Montana and look east and you can see the Earth curve on a clear day fairly easily. Even with all of that, people believe the Earth is flat and they believe it together. They have the same mind together. And so between Paul's letter to the Philippians and Jesus, saying to the crowds, believe in the light. I struggle with it a little bit. Because we have this idea that belief is something that we simply have to grit down and believe and cog like use our cognitive abilities to say this is absolutely true regardless of all of the science. Everything else must be explainable as long as we, if we are to believe. And the thing about that is, is that's not how belief works. It's not how belief works now. It's not how belief worked in the first century. It's not what Paul meant when he said, have the same mind in you. He's not saying think the same way. For Paul and for Jesus, when he says, believe in the light, this is not about a cognitive assent to certain principles. We love that idea that, that, that we can think our way to being right. If we just believe it hard enough, if we can just explain it right, then we will be right. Right, you see this a lot. My opinions, because I believe them so truly, are the same as your facts. That's not what Jesus means. That's not what Paul means. What they mean, what Jesus means, if you look a little bit above that line in, the, in today's gospel, believe in the light, Jesus uses a different metaphor, walk in the light. And this is, a, this is a metaphor that we have all over Christianity, this idea of walking with Jesus, right? We have the story of the road to Emmaus, where we walk along with Jesus. We have in Christian nomenclature, the idea of the walk, the idea of the way, that was the first name for the church, in fact, was the way, it was the idea that we're not stationary, but we're moving towards something else, we're acting, we're in action. That's what Jesus means. Walking toward the light, walking in the light, right? No one decides to walk around in the dark if they don't have to. Now, sometimes it happens. You know, we were camping over uh, Labor Day weekend, and right before uh, I was going to get in my sleeping bag, I decided I better go to the bathroom one more time. And I got out of the tent, zipped it down, made sure no one had w woken up when I got out of the tent, and realized that I didn't have a flashlight on me. And so I go walking toward the, the bathrooms that are a couple campsites away, and I forget that there's a rise in, in the, you know, the, um, we have the tent, and then there's a little dip, and then there's a little rise, and then there's the, the road, the campground road. 
And I forgot about the rise. I remember the dip. And I forgot about the rise. And um, this was on the coast by ocean shores. And so it wasn't really raining, but the, the mist was so thick that when it touched you, you sort of got as wet as if it was raining. And so uh, I went to, I fell on my knees because I forgot about the rise and I tripped. And went, I should have brought a flashlight. Right, that's what Jesus means. Walk in the light. Walk in such a way, do your actions in such a way that you can see what you are doing and be known by God. Orient yourselves toward the light. Right, people who walk with a flashlight, they walk right in the beam. Right, you don't shine the flashlight over here as you're walking this way. It won't work. Walk in the light, Jesus says. Orient yourselves to do actions that stay within the light. Orient yourselves to do actions that look like Jesus, Paul calls it, tells us. And what does Jesus do? What does walking in the light look like for Paul? It looks like having the same humility that Jesus had to reject comfort and complacency. Right? Jesus didn't have to come down to earth, become human, live, be tortured, die a horrible death on the cross, and, and then wait for a couple days to be resurrected. Like None of that was required of Jesus. Jesus chose that. That was a choice. So that the transformation of all creation and the reconciliation of all creation with God could begin. Jesus chose to do that over and over again. That's the whole point of those temptation stories at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Do you really want to do this? Are you sure? But Jesus chooses the cross. Jesus chooses relationship with us over his own comfort as a part of the Godhead. chooses to come down and to act in a way that privileges love and relationship. And that, Paul says, is in this hymn to Jesus that Paul is quoting from in today's letter to the Philippians, that is why he is held up by God as the most highly exalted. Because he chooses to offer himself for relationship and love. Now, choosing that, having that mind in you, choosing to walk, to orient ourselves in all of our actions toward this light that is the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus does not require us to also go find someone who's going to crucify us. It does mean, though, reflecting on our life as we are living it and asking if we are walking along the path that the flashlight that the light is illuminating for us, or if we're like those people who have a tendency to shine their headlamps or their flashlights in the campground up into the trees as they're trying to walk down the road. You know, they're more interested in what's over there than the path in front of them. The light's over there. The path's right here. If we choose to orient ourselves to be on the path that is lit for us, this path that is an imitation of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus that's going to cause us to make choices that will take us outside of what is comfortable and what we've always done. Now, that might be the mo not be the most appealing thing to hear right now because it's been a really long 18 months of unprecedented times. I, know, I would, can imagine that you're exhausted by it. I certainly am exhausted by it. And the idea that, okay, we're going to have to make ourselves uncomfortable some more for Jesus isn't all that appealing sometimes. But the reality is, is that taken together, even in the midst of this pandemic, most of us can say 
if we're honest with ourselves, that God has taken care of us, that we have food to eat, we have a roof over our heads, we even have a roof over our church this week. God has taken care of us in this. And if God has taken care of us in this, and God has taken care of us in Jesus, God cares about us so much that God has given us the food we need, the clothing we need, a roof over our heads, and has given us Jesus as a way to live in the deepest of relationships with us, then God will be with us if we are willing to step out of being comfortable and apathetic and into deeper relationship with the world around us. I was talking to someone who I have known for a while who uh, goes to church in another part of the country. And they were frustrated by their pastor. They said, she just doesn't seem to be engaged with us in the way that I really want. I'm, I'm tempted to write her a letter. And I said, well, you know, it's, it's none of my business. You know, I, but you know, I, I, I have a thought and you can take it or leave it, but um, I think you should write her a letter. You, you want me to what, she said? I thought you were gonna talk me down. No, 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 I said, no, 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 no. You definitely should write her a letter. I think that's absolutely the right thing to do. And in that letter, just in my opinion, I think you should say, hey, I know this is all really hard. I want you to know that I am praying for you and that if you need me to do something, please call me and let me know. Sincerely, thus and such. And my friend said, why would I do that? And I said, do you think if you write a letter and give her, your pastor a piece of your mind that's going to help you? No. Do you think if you write this letter and give your pastor a piece of your mind it's going to help her? No. Is this the way you want to live your life? Giving people a piece of your mind? Well, not really. Okay. So what if you wrote the other letter? Oh. My friend said. I guess I see your point. But I've never written that letter. Well, I said, the first one would probably be uncomfortable just the way it is. But maybe it'll get easier. I'll think about it, my friend said. Okay, that's fine. The decision to walk in the light is never easy. Usually that path is narrow, treacherous, and quite frankly, often looks like the cross. Not literally, but all too often, more than we would like. But if we're willing not to have a brain replacement with the Abbey normal brain, but to live a life that looks like Jesus, live a life that looks like God's love for humanity in relationship, God's hope for all creation, that it can be what it has been planned for from the beginning, one of light and life. Knowing that God, who has given us food and shelter and clothing and a roof over our heads, and his own son is with us, if we can walk in that light, then just doing that will do something that we feel like is impossible. Just doing that, changing where our feet go, could, with God's help, even transform the world into God's kingdom.
here on earth. Amen.